Wells Gray Park is this unique place that has features that I've never seen anywhere else in the world. You can go out onto the road in the middle of a winter's night and see northern lights, and you can hear wolves howling in the background. Wells Gray Park is known as Canada's Waterfalls Park because it has 41 named waterfalls. It's also called Canada's Volcanoes Park because there are six dormant or extinct volcanoes. The diversity of wilderness experiences in uh, Wells Gray is confined really only by the imagination. You know, you've got the lakes, mountains, you've got the glaciers, forests, the wildlife. Caribou exist in a bunch of isolated populations and one of the largest and safest populations is in Wells Gray Park. The species is critically endangered and that population is vitally important. In 2017, Wells Gray was nominated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and that process was not initially successful but we consider it as a work in progress. Thompson Rivers University's involvement here stemmed from a management plan produced in 1985 that called for the development of some facility that would promote public education and research into the natural values of the park. To begin with, we looked at 13 different sites in order to find out where to put the centre and the Board of Governors of what was then Caribou College, helped by the Friends of Wells Gray Park, finally settled on a piece of property that was a one-room schoolhouse that had last been used in the late 50s. The School District 56 donated that to Caribou College and for the next five years, Every year there was one or two two-week-long field courses run and in 2006 Lynn Baldwin and I started teaching it. Every time I teach it I think, wow, I get paid to do this. As a student going up there, even though you're only a few hours away from Kamloops, you feel like you're in a completely different place. You look at the ecosystem, you look around you and it's just amazing. You can't help but immerse yourself. I think of Wells Gray as being this transformative place. It has brought the world to TRU. Trevor Gower has been able to invite and host thinkers and writers and poets and artists like Robert Bateman and Wade Davis. And they came to Wells Gray because it is an endangered site in the sense that we don't have many places like Wells Gray left in the world. It serves as this intellectual and emotional attractor that can bring people together and forge new ideas and new understandings. I think one of the most powerful ways for students to learn is by doing and the learning on the land programs are so effective and so powerful because students actually are dealing with plants and resources and learning how our relationship affects the places where we find ourselves and our responsibilities as well. There's evidence in the woods just beside us here of every species that lives in the valley there as annual migration of grizzly through this area, you can see sign of it. And, and that's what's so important for teaching is you have right there things that other people dream about. I remember Lynn talking about sphagnum moss in the lecture. And then when we got out to that bog and to be there, I was like, wow, this is so cool. You can explain that in a class, but that connection is not nearly as strong than when you actually experience it. I see Wells Gray work on them, minute by minute, day by day, until they're waking up before I am to make sure that they get to hear the sandhill cranes bugling in the field across the road. They're the last one to come in off the trail. Being able to witness that transformation year after year after year, it's one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. Overall, there's, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 24,000 user days that have been logged in the original facility. The schoolhouse was great, but it had a one burner stove in it and there was no heating in the kitchen. And so it really did limit where we could actually and what we could actually teach and whether or not we could actually use it in all four seasons.
We are now in a facility that was constructed this time last year and was aimed at providing both a dormitory, a facility that could allow for cooking and running the maintenance of the building, as well as a classroom and a dining hall. If Wells Gray has been transformative in the past, then the creation and the opening of this new education and research center will increase the access. It's going to open doors to other disciplines that might not have felt comfortable taking their students into the facility that we had or spending as much time outside. TIU's new outdoor facility at Wells Gray is going to be of a really great benefit for our Faculty of Adventure, Culinary Arts and Tourism. This is going to give us a base where the three departments can actually plant themselves, take their students, get the experience and it's going to be directly related to each of their three areas. It's about inclusivity and it's about diversity and it's about giving everyone access. Now that the Wilderness Centre has been completed, it's going to make multi-day stays for courses very feasible, where the previous facilities were fairly primitive. I would never take back my experience and say, like, I wish I had the new facilities, because what I gained was something different than the students now are going to get. But with them, they'll probably get a better night's sleep. So I think the learning even might be more enriching, engaging, and they can actually participate with like a full body, full mind. Now we can have the confidence that we could step back into the environment and it'd be warm, there'd be food. We can run courses in all four seasons now. I'm really excited about seeing First Nation and Canon Lake Indian Band bring in elders, knowledge keepers to help instruct some of the courses. The students are going to pick up and carry on the work that we're starting and it's important that they do so in a way that's going to benefit relationships with each other and how we view our resources in the environment. People have contributed their time and energy and heart to making this a reality, including Trevor Goward and the Land Conservancy that have been co-champions with us in trying to allow more and more people access to this place that we've seen be so transformative. Lots of people on campus and in Clearwater and in the valley have certainly worked to bring this together. Local residents do construction on site, they mend things. It's a really collaborative. Effort. Now that Anne and I are both able to contribute to ongoing education, it gives a really nice feeling that we're able to help students with their goals. There have been some really important donors and benefactors for this facility. This hasn't been a single person's effort. It hasn't been a small number of people's effort. It has been a community effort. It's been supported by so many different people to actually make sure that the facility would be successful. Thank you. Thank you.